Our time of confession is is prompted by Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 to 24, in which we read these words. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder, and everyone and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. And anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to that person, then come and offer your gift. I was looking and reminding myself of what raka means. And the reason it's left in the Aramaic there is because nobody's 100% sure what it means. But our best understanding of what it means is uh, that basically you might be calling someone empty-headed <laughs> or a numbskull or you know, a wooden head, <laughs> maybe, if you're Dutch. <laughs> But uh, it is interesting that something that we might consider relatively mild, Jesus emphasizes as being part and parcel with even murdering someone. Let us come to God in congregational prayer, keeping that in mind. Father in heaven, we hear your law, which says, Thou shalt not murder. And we hear your Son Jesus teaching us that not only shall we not murder, but that if we are even angry with someone, then we are subject to judgment. Not that anger is never appropriate, but rather that we ought to be very, very careful with our anger and very aware that it shall be scrutinized. Likewise, O Lord, we hear and we see that insulting people in our anger or calling them fools those things too are very akin to, in our hearts, murderous intent and even murder itself. And so, Lord, as we look back on our, on our day, even today, and as we look back on our week, and as we look back on our lives, Help us to see, O oh God. Help us to see where we are angry with people. Who is that person? Who are those people with whom we are still angry? For whom we still hold bitterness or resentment? O oh God, by Your Spirit, Illuminate in us whether we are or have been murdering our brothers and sisters in our hearts. And Lord, as we take a moment of silence to hear your Spirit speak, would you also hear our confession as well? Lord God, please, please forgive us for our murderous hearts. 
But also, O oh God, please help us to make it right. Lord, we know that it, in this world it is not necessarily that we will all have sunny, perfect, happy, happy relationships all the time, O oh God. But we know also that Your calling is for us to bring reconciliation in this world. We know that Jesus Himself says to us through the Apostle Paul that we have been given a ministry of reconciliation in Jesus Christ. And here, O oh God, we hear Jesus telling us to go and be reconciled to the people with whom we are angry. And so, Lord, we pray that You will not only forgive us, O oh God, but that You will strengthen us to make things right. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our words of assurance come from Psalm 27, and it is worth remembering that that our obedience to the law of God, to the commandments in the Heidelberg Catechism, it is highlighted as an act of gratitude. It is not highlighted as something that we must do in order to earn God's favor. And so when we hear Jesus teaching about murder, we ought to be hearing that this is our grateful response. This is part of our grateful response to God for who He is. And the psalmist, the psalmist understands this. This is what Psalm 27 says. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And then moving on, the psalmist continues with one thing I ask from the Lord. This only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord, and so seek Him in His temple, temple, for in the day of trouble, He will keep me safe in His dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of His tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. 